can do for the camera. Thank awesome, thank you, Ziad. Awesome. Hey, thank you for having me and thank you for being here. And for those of you who know me, I know exactly what you're thinking. This guy loves his ski suits. But you know what? There's one thing I love more than ski suits, and that's cameras. And I used to carry my legacy camera everywhere. And this is when a camera was just one camera, one lens, one image sensor, one image signal processor. And I got to say, it's really hard to innovate when you only have one camera. Year after year, a new camera would come out, and still just one camera. I don't know, but to me, that's not innovation. You know what innovation is? The future of photography? It's computational photography. It's not one camera, it's five cameras. Check out the latest Snapdragon device from Xiaomi. It just launched a month ago. This thing packs five cameras, five lenses, five image sensors, with AI, all working to deliver, uh, to deliver amazing shots. This thing has a telephoto lens for 5x optical zoom, a portrait lens for 2x optical zoom, a primary camera that delivers 108 megapixel shots. Who does that? We do that. An ultra wide and a macro lens. It's incredible. The macro lens, you can get up close to tiny objects and snap a photo, and they turn out humongous. I love this thing. But this is the future of photography. Computational photography can deliver all of these features. Portrait mode shots, 4K HDR, it's incredible. But it doesn't just make your photography experience better, it makes all of your apps better. So now in your communication apps, like you just saw, you can use your camera to enhance yourself, have more fun, and you can even add augmented reality to your apps. So features like Google Maps can now use computer vision and augmented reality so you can see your directions right in front of you. This is the future of photography, all powered by Snapdragon. And you know what? It's made such a better world. In our old world, we used to have just one camera per household that maybe one person knew how to use. But in this new world, thanks to Snapdragon, we now have five cameras per person. And every person is an amazing photographer when you have Snapdragon. Earlier this year, we ran a photography contest. And Snapdragon users could send in their photos to win a new Snapdragon device and have their photos shown off in Hawaii by your favorite camera marketer. These photos were amazing. Any lighting condition, anywhere in the world, Snapdragon delivers an amazing photo. We've turned the entire world into great photographers, thanks to computational photography. So, Snapdragon has the largest market share in smartphones. And every smartphone has multiple cameras, up to five cameras. That means that Qualcomm is powering the most smartphone cameras on the planet. That's right. But it gets better, because you know what? If you want to know what, what's next in camera innovation, well, you came to the right place. In fact, I know a guy who puts all these amazing camera technologies into Snapdragon. And I want him to show you what's coming next in camera technology. So ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Senior Director of Product Management for Cameras, but I just call him the King of Cameras. Everybody give it up for Judd Heap. <laughs> Judd, show him what we got. How about PJ's energy level? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. So I'll say it's a good thing that we're not at an event like the Grammys, uh, because this morning I came into the green room backstage, and it turns out I'm wearing the exact same shirt as Keith. Um, but it's OK. We both have good taste. So last year, I talked about the fact that I really love my job at Qualcomm because I get to work on camera. And the reason is because camera is how we share our, our, our lives and our, our thoughts with each other. And the great thing about the beast here is that at the heart of the beast is the Spectra 480 
ISP. And we've taken a huge step forward in camera technology this year on Spectra 480. It's the biggest, it's the biggest update we've ever done to camera. And I want to share it with you. I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's get to it. Thank you. Easily the coolest video of the day. All right, so the Snapdragon Spectra 480 ISP, it has two things that are really great. First is gigapixel speed. And what we mean by this is that we can now capture 64 megapixels at 30 frames per second. And you'll hear other people talk about, you know, gigabytes uh, per second, gigabits per second, but in camera, what we're really concerned with is pixels. So that's why we call this the gigapixel speed ISP. The second part is professional quality. Now everybody knows that if you want to buy a, a, a high-end smartphone, you want a professional quality camera, a camera that actually rivals a digital SLR. And that's what we're bringing to you in Snapdragon. Both of these we're bringing to you with the Spectra 480 ISP. So PJ loves ski suits, and I love dogs. So when you take a great picture of your dog, it always comes from pixels. And pixels come from an image sensor. And image sensors today are what are known as bear patterns. And these are red, green, green, and blue pixels. And these pixels actually are separated and get clocked into the ISP one by one, from the, to from the top left of the image sensor to the bottom right of the image sensor. And this happens at one pixel per clock cycle. So it goes through the pipeline one by one. But we knew that if we were going to do some really interesting things and make some big advancements in the Spectra 480 ISP, we would have to do a paradigm shift, do something really, really different with how we handled the pipeline. And so what, spec what the Spectra 480 ISP does is it actually clocks in four pixels per clock cycle. And that gives us a lot more efficiency. And you may ask why we do this, and, and there's a few reasons. The first reason is that in a world where everyone is trying to go faster, faster megahertz, we're actually going to slow the clock down. And the reason why we do that is to get a better, a better thermal envelope so that we run cooler. But we can also increase the clock rate and achieve the two gigapixel per second mark that I mentioned earlier. But really what this does, this gigapixel speed, is that it enables you to really have some really great new features in the ISP. Because we have some great margin now, we can put in a lot more features. So as Keith mentioned, the Spectra 480 ISP is actually broken into three pieces. The first is the high-speed capture block. And this is where the image sensors are connected and all of the data flows in at high speed. The second block is the EVA block, and this is the engine for video analytics. We talked about this last year when we introduced the computer vision ISP. This is where depth maps are created, where objects can be identified, and that can all be used in your videos and in your photos. The third block is the HEIF block. And this is the block that actually compresses, encodes, and stores your photographs. So all of these make up the ISP. And I mentioned that because of the gigapixel speeds in the ISP, we now have the ability to do some really interesting new things. First of all, let's talk about focus. In the past, we could focus on pixels pretty much in the center of the image sensor, it's the center one-ninth of the, of the image, basically. But now with the extra margin that we have in the gigapixel speed ISP, we can actually use the entire image sensor as focus pixels. So we have 9x, nine times more focus points than we did in the past, which is huge. That means all of your, your photographs that you take when you shoot videos, everything, everything can be done as focus from end to end, from end, end of the image to the other end of the image. There's no having to worry about you know, center waiting for focus. 
The other thing we did is that, going back to the image sensor we talked about before, there's a new class of image sensors coming out which are called quad CFA image sensors. And instead of looking like this, like a standard bear sensor, they look like this. And the pixel pattern is like four times larger than it was in the past. And it turns out these sensors are pretty difficult to deal with. They're pretty hard to deal with. One, because they're huge, usually above 48 megapixels. But this pixel pattern is, is a little bit more difficult to actually handle. So what we've done in the Spectra 480 ISP is that we've hardened logic to actually handle these image sensors uh, with, with accelerated hardware, which is great, because we see that, we see that uh, the market is going this way with these types of image sensors as resolutions grow and grow. Another feature that's enabled by the gigapixel speeds in the ISP, noise reduction. Noise reduction is really important, especially in low light. So what we've done is, in the Spectra 480 ISP, we've added specific hardware, which is brand new, to handle all different types of noise. And again, mainly, it's for low light. So static images in low light, you'll see that in the previous generation, to the new generation, we've added a brand new noise filter core, which is getting rid of coarse grain noise. And again, this is the type of noise that appears in very, very low light photographs. But what you can also see at the same time is that we preserve the edges and details on the text. So you can still read the text here, which is quite unique. It's pretty difficult to actually reduce noise and, and not lose detail. This, these cores also enhance contrast. This chart is called a dead leaves chart. And this chart will show really quickly if you're losing detail or losing contrast. So you can see from the previous generation to the Spectra 480 ISP, it looks almost the same. There's actually no detail loss, which is really important. And finally, what we've done for video is that we've added a brand new uh, capability to our temporal filtering core in video, which allows us to process pixels not globally, but on a local level for motion compensation. And what that means is, is that when you're shooting a video, any local movement in the scene now can actually be processed, whereas before it couldn't. And that results in 40% more pixels that can be processed during video capture than before. And that means all of the videos you shoot will be silky smooth, and they'll have much less noise than before. So we've done some great work here on noise reduction. Talking more about video in particular, in the past, we've been able to capture 4K HDR. We've done this for a while. But many people may not know that you can actually capture snapshots at the same time that you're capturing video. There's always a button there in the viewfinder that you can actually tap and actually capture snapshots at the same time you're shooting video. But in the past, that was pretty much limited to the video resolution. So if you were shooting 4K, your live snapshots, as we call them, were actually only 8 megapixels. But now I'd like to announce that with the Spectra 480 ISP and the gigapixel speeds, we're actually able now to capture 4K video and at the same time capture individual 64 megapixel photographs simultaneously. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But we didn't stop there. So instead of video mode, if you look at photo mode, photo mode we've increased dramatically as well. 200 megapixels. So when you're shooting a photo, you'll be able now to capture at 200 megapixels. And why do we do this? You know, wh wh why, why are the pixels getting so big now? Why, why is there this race for more pixels? Actually, there's a really good reason for it. And that's if you want to zoom in and get ultra clear detail with digital zoom, the more pixels you have, the better. <clears throat> so you can have very, very sharp detail when you zoom in with digital zoom. And this is not vaporware. So I talk about 200 megapixels, but it's not just theoretical. Qualcomm has partnered with image sensor makers around the world to bring 200 megapixel sensors to market. And so next year, on Snapdragon 865, you'll actually be able to get handsets <clears throat> with 200 megapixel image sensors. And it'll only be supported by Snapdragon 865. Now, I want to talk about some metrics that the, uh, that, the, that the gigapixel speeds of the new ISP brings. The first is power savings. I touched on this earlier in the clock rate slide. If you're shooting 4K60 video, we're actually 16% lower power than we were in the previous generation. So that's, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good uh, decrease in power consumption. 
Also, if you're shooting in low light, because of the extra noise reduction cores I mentioned, you get 18% more texture in your photographs, which is huge. You'll get much more detailed photographs than before. And lastly, as I mentioned, when you're shooting video, you'll, get, you'll be able to process 40% more pixels in the video because we have now local motion compensation being accounted for in the ISP, not just global. I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about something I talked about last year, which is HEIF, or High Efficiency Image File Format. This is something that, again, we talked about last year, and it's a new file format that actually can compress files further than they were before, about 50% more. But as I mentioned last year, that's like the least interesting thing about this file format. The interesting thing is that this file format, as an image container, can give you the ability to have a lot more features. And those features range from being able to shoot and save HDR, being able to mix video with stills, being able to do computer vision and save that information, as well as uh, actually handle a depth map. And that's what I want to talk about today. At Qualcomm, we've worked with Google, and Google has created a brand new standard for the depth map. And that depth map can now be stored within the HEIF container. So if you take a great picture, and this is actually PJ's niece, if you take a great picture, you can use depth information from a depth camera, like a time of flight camera or, or stereo cameras, and you can actually compute and get a really great bouquet result, the blurred background, which everybody loves for, for portrait photography. But in the past, if you wanted to actually take these two images, they had to be saved separately as two separate JPEGs. But with the HEIF format, these two images can actually be in the same file in the same container, so they're always available. Also, HEIF allows you to add EXIF data. And the EXIF data has always been there as well, but that gives you the ability to, uh, to know like, where the image was shot geographically. It also tells you what the camera was doing at the time, like what the light levels were, what the f-stop was, and what the shutter speed was. All that can be stored in the container as well. But what's new, and what we've done with Google again, is that we've added dynamic depth format. And this is brand new. This is now supported for the first time on Snapdragon in 865. You will be able to not only store images in the HEIF container, EXIF data, but also now the depth map. Thank you. And it's actually about time, because the depth map was always created. Our EVA engine was always creating these depth maps. But they just kind of went away after the image was shot. But now they can be stored. So what that means is that when you shoot a great image, you can go back later and change the focus. You can change uh, the bouquet. You can add depth effects all after the fact, which is great. So everything I've talked about so far has really focused on the ISP hardware itself the Spectra 480 ISP. But of course, the beast, Snapdragon 865, is, is way, way more than that. And the way more than that part is actually our fifth generation AI engine, which Ziad talked about. That consists of the, the CPU, the GPU, and the DSP. And those work really, really closely with the ISP in 865. And there's a lot of benefits to that. And, and when they work closely together, we can do some really cool things like segmentation. And you've seen segmentation before. In segmentation, you can do things like uh, I can take a photograph or a video of somebody. I can make them be in color. And everyone else around them, we can be in black and white. Or we can take a, a, a snapshot of a, uh, a landscape scene. And I can replace uh, what would be a gray sky with a blue sky. But those are sort of interesting, but maybe a little bit you know, uh, not, not, not so great use cases. What really is interesting and that can be done with this AI engine is much, much deeper than that. We can actually use the AI engine coupled with the ISP to do something new called semantic segmentation. And semantic segmentation actually gives you the ability to improve image quality. It's, it's a lot more than just doing something gimmicky like you know, replacing a sky color or something like that. So I'd like to introduce Toshi Torihara from Morpho, and he's going to tell us about what Morpho is doing in the field of semantic segmentation. Thank you, Thank Toshi. You Thank you. Very honored to be here. Thank you very much. And Toshi, while they're setting up your demo here, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what Morpho is doing in the area of semantic segmentation and what your take on it is? Sure, Jared. Uh, uh, the idea is to bring the best of AI to enhance the image quality using semantic segmentation. 
and kind of a long name to remember. So uh, we are simply calling it a semantic filter for this uh, presentation. Right. So let's get to. I think your demo's ready. I'll, okay. I'll let you have the floor. <clears throat> so in this demo, we're essentially applying AI segmentation that can identify semantics. Or in another word, uh, or in another word uh, the meanings to each pixel categories uh, of the object you're trying to take. So in this case, uh, hair, uh, skin, fabric, and background. So this is what the segmentation engine looks like on the back end. Um, so in, uh, in conventional uh, imaging, uh, we are um, computational photography is typically applied to the entire image, which can sometimes cause uh, unwanted side effects such as um, detail, loss of details, textures, and noises in certain areas. Now I'm going to switch mode to a color overlay mode. So semantic filter uh, is able to apply distinct algorithm uh, in different strength level that are most effective to achieve the best image quality as possible. Let's take a look at the video. Conventional imaging, conventional method, imaging algorithms such as noise reduction is being applied to the entire image at the same strength level. Notice in some area, some of its details are being lost in this uh, example. Now let's take a look at semantic filter. Semantic filter can solve this problem by understanding the meaning of each pixel categories. Therefore, we can apply the right algorithm at its right place. So whether it is NR, high dynamic range, smoothing, edge sharpening, color enhancements, semantic filter can make the photo super, cl super clear with preserved details and end up with final image that you would always come back, want to come back and see, perhaps with a beautified skin. So this feature that combines the best of AI and computational photography is available on Snapdragon 865. And our objective is for the users to maximize the benefit of this feature. Uh, so we are uh, willing to customize upon specific needs and use case, um, use case for further differentiation on the camera. We're looking forward to making the best use of Qualcomm's great, great fifth generation AI engine uh, to utilize uh, optimization and performance improvement for semantic filter. Thank you. Thanks, Toshi. Thanks very much. OK, let's talk more about AI. So there's another AI application or use case which is really important to camera. And uh, it was mentioned earlier by Keith and also PJ that uh, the future of smartphone cameras is multiple cameras. And in this case, like an ultra wide, wide and telephoto. The problem with these cameras though is that if you want to do like a smooth zoom between these cameras like that Chris even talked about this morning, it's really difficult to do because the cameras are never exactly aligned, they never actually reproduce the same color. And so you can see here that if you're trying to seamlessly zoom, like a zoom lens, between the ultra wide, wide, and telephoto cameras, you get these discontinuities, these jumps. So our partners at ArcSoft are using the AI engine to actually solve this problem, to make the, the actual transition between the ultra wide, wide, and telephoto cameras seamless so that it looks very smooth, very fluid, very much like it would with a mechanical zoom lens. So as you can see, this is a huge difference, right? 
So check this out. ArcSoft is a great partner of ours as well, and they have several demos for camera running in the, in the demo room next door. So I want to also talk about video capture. Uh, video capture in the past started out at standard definition, which was about 0.3 megapixels equivalency in terms of photography. We then moved to full HD or 1080p, which is about two megapixels. And then we moved to 4K, which we've been talking about for the past few years, which is a little over eight megapixels. But today we're taking a huge step forward. And now I'm happy to announce that for the first time ever, due to the fact that we're doing four pixels per clock and now have the thermal envelope available, we're able to do 8K30 for the first time ever on a Snapdragon mobile device. Thank you. But it's not just about, oh, I'm sorry. We do have some 8K footage here. So 8K footage, this footage was actually shot on a Snapdragon 865 just this week in Arizona. And this huge LED monitor is awesome, but it's still only 4K. So please go next door. We actually have some 8K, real 8K displays, and you can see the, the incredible clarity and detail in these video sequences. So check it out. So as I was about to say, it's not just about resolution and size either. It's also about the quality of the pixels that you capture. And we've talked in the past about being able to capture millions of colors and now billions of colors because of the wide color gamut that you get with 10 bits per color. So again, we've talked about this several times. It's actually called HDR. And when you're shooting in 4K, Snapdragon is able to shoot in 4K HDR or high dynamic range. And we've done this for generations. We did this back several years ago on 845 uh, with hybrid log gamma. We then moved to HDR10. And then we moved to HDR10+, plus, which we talked about last year. And these are all just incremental steps in improving the quality of the pixels that you have during video. And it's kind of funny that even some of our competitors really have just gotten to 4K. And they're not even really even thinking about HDR yet. But today I have an incredible announcement. We are now taking our fourth step, our fourth generation, into HDR video capture. And I think all of you know this logo. So I'd like to announce for the first time ever, not just on a smartphone, but on any, any consumer device with a camera, Dolby Vision for video capture. And this is going to absolutely change the way that people can shoot video. I mean, it's the ultimate video quality right out of the box. So I'd like to introduce Teo O from Dolby Labs, and he's going to tell you a lot more about Dolby Vision for video capture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dolby's mission is to deliver transformational experiences. Our promise is to empower creatives through technologies to revolutionize storytelling and entertainment. Today, I'm here to talk to you about how we are doing that with Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision transforms your entertainment experience with ultra vivid picture that brings content to life. With incredible brightness, contrast, color, and detail. It is the leading imaging solution in market today. We brought first Dolby Vision TV to consumers in 2015. Now, there are hundreds of millions of playback devices across various device types and various pricing points. The creative communities has fully embraced Dolby Vision as the best way to create content. Today, over 2,500 TV shows and movies are available in Dolby Vision from all major Hollywood studios and content creators all around the world. Leading streaming services 
such as Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple TV Plus, and IGE are regularly generating original Dolby Vision movies and TV series every week. For consumers, this momentum means more of their favorite shows are in Dolby Vision. The benefit of Dolby Vision does not stop there. We constantly think about how we can continue to push the boundary of innovation. And today, I'm excited to share with you our next frontier for Dolby Vision, user-generated content. Dolby Vision for video capture will be available on Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 865 mobile platform. It is the world first chip with Dolby Vision for video capture capability, which will enable mobile device manufacturers the ability to integrate this feature into their future devices. With Dolby Vision video capture, now you can capture and preserve all of brightness, contrast, color, and detail of true to life moments. And most importantly, this single file is comparable to all playback devices. From Dolby Vision devices that showcase the incredible imagery that you experienced when you recorded it, to legacy HDR or even SDR devices. With this new capability, Dolby Vision is no longer just for professional creatives. It is for everyone in this room. So capture and share your favorite moment just as you experience them with incredible brightness, contrast, color, and detail now possible on Qualcomm's mobile platform. Thank you. Awesome job, too. Thank you. All right. A huge step forward. So I want to talk a little bit more about video capture. Uh, we talked about the gigapixel speeds of the ISP unlocking all of these new features. One such feature is actually 4K capture at 120 frames per second. This is brand new. We talked about 8K30. This is the next step, 4K 120. And what 4K 120 actually brings you is the ability to capture natively in 4K 120 and play it back in 4K 120 on the same device. So as you know, there are displays available today which have broken the 60 hertz barrier, 90 hertz, 120 hertz, 120 frames per second. So now you can record video natively in 120 frames per second, 4K, and play it back on the same display at 120 frames per second, and it's silky smooth. It's incredible. But you can also use this for slow motion. And so slow motion can actually be done now in 4K, because you're shooting at 120, you can actually, actually play that back at 4x of a difference than, than 4K 30. And therefore, you get 4K slow, for, sorry, 4x slow-mo uh, with four, in 4K format. So this is also a first. And finally, we want to also talk about something new, which is slow-mo without limits. And what this really means is, is that in the past, if you wanted to shoot slow-mo, you typically did it in 720p. And we can do 720p 960. And you've actually heard of this in the past. Maybe our competitors have talked about this or even bigger numbers. But I'm here to tell you that those numbers aren't really true. Because typically, when anybody has ever gone above 480 frames per second, it's been using frame interpolation, which is actually not really native. In this case, we're actually capturing at 720p 960 native frames per second. So the ISP is actually running this fast. So the other thing about this is that in the past, when you had to do slow motion at 960 or higher, you actually had to capture the moment right when it happened. And you got like no more than like 0.4 seconds. So it was always really hard to capture right what you wanted to capture right at the right time. You ended up missing it by like half a second. So I'm here to say that on Snapdragon, with slow-mo without limits, 720p, you can capture a video as long as you want in, in 960 frames per second. And therefore, you won't ever miss any of the action.
It's great. But of course, Snapdragon 865 with this new camera will be in, in consumers' hands next year in 2020. Like I said, all of these great new features, we're, we're so happy to bring these to market. We're so happy to have changed the ISP fundamentally, to have the thermal envelope and the power that we needed to add all of these new features. So we look forward to all of you using them next year. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to bring up Leilani De Leon to talk about Snapdragon Elite Gaming. <laughs>